このビデオはスクエアスペースからの提供でお送りします。This video is brought to you in part by Squarespace.If you want to build a nice website, use squarespace.com.Probably gonna have a message about that a little bit later.So yeah, check it out. じゃあ素晴らしいウェブサイトを作ってみたいなら、スクエアスペースで。本当に、本当に。じゃあ始め。What's up, everybody? It's your boy Reggie Casual, and welcome to this episode of The Casual. And today we're talking about Supreme. You know, a little side note on this because, you know, I'm based in Tokyo.、Uh, Supreme in Japanese is not Supreme, it is not Supreme, it is Supreme. It's like Shu and Prim, so Supreme. Anyway, that's beside the point, and you'll get that later. These are seven brands that are like Supreme that everybody should know about. Intro. Drop it. The first is Evazin Skateboards. It's a relatively small brand out of Tokyo, complete with its array of decks, bucket hats, and graphic tees, which is which is skate altogether. And admittedly, it is bare bones, but it has carved out a special place. In its native country. Its cut and sew pieces are standard, albeit with a bit of Japanese flair, and some choice collaborations make this label a pretty good go to if you're looking for something in the supreme range of things, but a little bit different. As skate culture continues to explode in Japan, more brands are taking the Evazin route and popping up everywhere. But as long as Evazin continues with that community spirit, it probably has a place in Japan. Qcon is yet another brand that you should know about in that supreme range of things, considering that it's a skate park, cafe, workspace, chill spot rather than just a simple brand. But Qcon does have enough going for it to have collabs with Fragment, mainly because the owner of Qcon personally knows Hiroshi Fujiwara. And I'm actually wearing a Qcon hoodie right now. It's really dope. This is the Fragment collaboration. It's pretty standard as far as brands go, but it's an awesome departure from the run of the mill. And Qcon Stick is, like Evazin, its community driven approach. Its pieces sell out dumb quick as it relies on its small but hungry network. And when it does drop, which is rare, it's usually in collaboration with a local artist. It's definitely one of those if you're in the no brands, but if you know it, you got a gem for sure. Son of the Cheese. Weird names aside, weird names aside, it's yet another brand that acts as a cafe and community space than just a simple clothing brand. And this is where we're starting to sense a pattern with these Japanese labels. It's all about this kind of community aspect. As with the other brands on this list, Son of the Cheese, entire ambiance is old school streetwear with the splash of Japanese silhouettes to round out some of their cut and sew options. And it's just a cool space to chill the F out. It really is. And that's usually the thing with these skate brands in Japan. They focus more on the activity than the clothes, and the clothes are just an extension of that activity, in this case, being skate. In a sense, you don't even have to buy the clothes. You just gotta be about the lifestyle, which is, which is great because I don't wanna feel forced to buy anything. I don't. But we gotta take a break from skate a bit because there's some brands that aren't skate that do a great job and use the same methods of Supreme. And that's where we look at FR2. Now, we've spoken about this label a lot, and it's definitely becoming more popular and known to those in Asia and out west. Here's the thing though a sizable amount of Japanese in the street fashion community think that FR2 is a bit dasai, which means tacky, with many feeling it's an obvious cash grab by brand runner Yoishikawa. Now, many even blame him for using FR2 as an excuse to take pics of nude models. Which he frequently does for the brand. But I'm, I'm not here to judge. If I was in the same position, maybe. And, and plus, Rio gave us Vanquish, and that's a big deal. But FR2 is like Supreme in the fact that it uses hype to drive exposure. It's now famous smoking kills tea, has become its box logo, and they often come out with nonsensical accessories a la Supreme. But it works as a street brand, and there's no denying its popularity. Next up, we got Privilege or the Privilege brand because there's some people who've used Privilege before. But the Privilege that we're talking about is the one that's based in Japan that has a location in New York. Privilege attached itself to skate as well as hip hop. And it's also a bit of a larger brand, having several locations throughout the country. And one of the few Japanese brands that aren't named Bape that has a location in America. As such, you're getting the typical American style streetwear and very minimal nods to Japanese style. By all accounts, 
The Privilege brand is more so about bringing American East Coast flavor to a Japanese market and then sending it back to America, because that always works. If it came out today in Tokyo or even in the West, it probably doesn't work. But since it came out in 2010, it does. Next up is Ombre Nino. It's another brand that takes from skate, but goes a bit further than what Supreme would. Complete with a full collection of looks that look like they came out of a magazine in 1994, Ombre Nino does a pretty good job of giving a snapshot of what streetwear was before it got all ritzy. We got oversized, ill-fitting motifs, sports jackets, coats, and bright track suits. They all make their appearances, and overall, it's incredibly well done as far as a snapshot is concerned. But I suspect that a brand like Ombre Nino is such a representation of an era now gone that many will simply overlook it, especially out west. Ombre Nino isn't easy to categorize, so while it's pretty freaking amazing objectively, subjectively it may be a hard pass for many, which is a shame because they do good work. Now the last brand on this list is a brand that you all know. It's a western brand and one of the only western brands on this list. It's Noah, okay? Let's just stop with the introductions. It's Noah. Now I know you know about Noah, started by Brandon Babenzian, used to be the creative director of Supreme, Supreme, right? All that good stuff. But instead of just talking about Noah, I want to show you the Noah location here in Tokyo. It is amazing. I wanna stop talking about it and I wanna go there. So one of the great things about Japan is that everything kind of gets enhanced, even Western brands. So things like Champion, Dickies, Doc Martens, they all get enhanced just a little bit. Now, the store that we're about to go to, I told you before, is Noah, and it's definitely a brand that you should know about, but the Tokyo chapter of Noah is incredibly intense. They call it the Noah Clubhouse, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of people say that Noah is kind of like supreme for old people and and i would not disagree with that statement the thing about noah is just that it's just a great chill space right like that's one thing that japan just does well is instead of just focusing on the clothes, they focus on the experience. And when you focus on the experience, it makes for a better community. So like, even though you can't simply just walk around and find Noah on the main street, you really have to explore. And that's really the essence of Japanese fashion, to explore, to discover more. And Noah exemplifies that in every single way, especially with their location here in Japan. Everything about it is just ridiculous. So do that. Now, obviously that wasn't done in the same day. I'm not, I'm not even wearing the same thing, but the intent was, was a good one. That was, the intention was to show you a place that is doing fairly well in Japan and a great representation of how Western brands can come to Japan and make their mark. They really have to dive into that lifestyle. And Noah does a fantastic job of interjecting itself within the lifestyle of skate. So there you go. That was your last one. Great, right? It's pretty awesome. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. So those are seven brands that are pretty solid alternatives to Supreme, but I recognize a lot of these were Japanese. So I'm gonna need your help. Go ahead and state some of your favorite brands that are like Supreme in the comments, or just talk about the ones that we talked about today. Maybe your favorite one, whatever, what have you. But before we get into the rest of the outro, let's go ahead and get in a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Don't forget to check out our partner, Squarespace. For all you future fashion entrepreneurs out there, Squarespace websites give you amazing, rich, detailed galleries and portfolios. Simultaneous posting from your social profiles for massively easy integration across all your networks and expansive e-commerce options like linking your products to and from your Instagram account, which is crazy 
but we live in the future, so you should expect it. And if that doesn't get you, then maybe 10% off by using our code squarespace.com slash the casual will. So head over, start that site you've been meaning to start today. Give a thumbs up if you like the video. Follow on Instagram for the latest out of Japan and beyond. You know what it is. Keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion and culture from Tokyo. It's your boy, and keep it casual. And I will see you guys in a minute. Or you can stay a little bit longer for Japanese lesson time. All right, so earlier in the onset, we were talking about Supreme. And how do you say Supreme in Japanese? It is Supreme. Supreme, eh? right? Somebody asks you, where are you gonna go? And you're gonna say, I'm gonna go to Supreme, right? How do you say this in Japanese? It is Supreme Eiku or Supreme Eikimasu. Supreme Eiku, Supreme Eikimasu. Or Supreme Nikimasu. Or Supreme Niku. Those two. Supreme Niku, Supreme Eiku, Supreme Nikimasu, Supreme Eikimasu. Right? That's how you say, I will go to Supreme. Now, let's break this down. Supreme, we know. Ikimas. Ikimas means to go. Iku means to go. They both mean the same thing, right? Same thing. Ikimas is the long form. Iku is the short form. But you don't want to say iku 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 and secession because that means something totally different. And all you Japanese language students know what it means. Don't be dirty minded. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Anyway, you might also hear a little bit of an accent or a little bit of a qualifier before I say ikimasu or iku. I'm saying e or ni. These are grammatical functions for motion. Don't worry about it. Just know if you will go to Supreme, Supreme iku, Supreme ni iku, Supreme ikimasu, Supreme ni ikimasu. Both of those mean the same exact thing. Anyway, that's how you say it. That's your Japanese lesson from somebody who's been learning Japanese for a ridiculously long time, right? So, uh, that's it. I'm out of here. No more.